e mihi ana ki a koe te tuakana e te haunui, mau i whakawate i a koe kia noho tahi ki a tātou, kia wānanga tahi ki a tātou uh, i tēnei pō. Uh, mō tēnei kaupapa, mō te NFT, mō te blockchain, mō, mō enei āhuatanga toi katoa no rere, mihi kau ana ki a koe tuakana. Very stoked there is to have you um, here on our, on our wānanga. I've um, been looking forward to this yarn for a little while. Um, yeah, bro, just need to have you here, bro. Oh, bro, thank you for having me. Um, me too, bro, for setting up the space um, and for setting up your, um, you know, your group on Discord with our blockchain navigators, you know, just to help bring the space to more of our people. And, um, bro, you've had some heavy hitters on here already, so... Hey, you're a heavy hitter too, bro. So. <laughs> I'm a hitter, yeah, not yeah. a heavy one. <laughs> <laughs> now getting lighter by the day with the F45, eh? <laughs> uh, trying, bro, trying. <laughs> yeah, my bro. So, at the note, um, I, I don't think any of you won't know who this bro is. Well, um, ko te haunui tuna tēnei. This fella, I, I, I describe him as a fella with the Midas touch. Um, ever since I first met him, anything he touches turns to gold. This fella... He just picks up something and suddenly he's a master at it. I, I remember other Tamoko artists in the studio where he was working when he was just starting out, just going, man, this fellow, he's a gun, you know, that, that sort of thing. Oh, I wish I was like that when, he, when I started. Um, I remember when we met, bro, um, early on. Same. You had your um, exhibition. Um, you were at Wintech, eh? studying at Wintech. Had your yep. exhibition. And at the Fano, it was... It was amazing. Went with the bro George, or actually a, a, a crew of us went to Tautoko. Um, and Te Haunui had created pieces where he had created the piece. He had done it in a sketch. He had done it in a painting. He had done it in a 3D sculptor, sculpture. Um, and I was just like, whoa, at that point. And um, bro, just blown away with your, with your skill and your talent. It is a talent. You have a natural talent. You have pūmanawa. But you also have pukinga. Um, it's something that I know you've refined and you've really um, developed, like worked hard on um, over the years, bro. So really want to mihi to you. Um, and and again, if you didn't know, um, he is also the the creative, um, the creator behind um, Graph Grims, which is a NFT copa that's that's pumping out there at the at the moment. So shout out to all the Graph Grims whānau. Um, but bro, just just to give our fun a little bit of a background, a little bit of a context, can you tell us your your kind of art journey from you know young fella doodling in your books and stuff? Because I know that links directly with mm. where you are now. So can you take yep. us on a bit of a journey from back there to to where we are now? Yeah, mean brother, well, I'll show for that walk down memory yeah. lane. That was nine years ago, bro, twenty thirteen. Yeah. That exhibition, and I remember remember first meeting you twenty twelve, so ten years ago, yeah. with the bro George. George. Um, George Kingy, shout but, out to the brother. Yeah, George Kingy, <laughs> the brave Thorge. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, kia ora te whanau. Thank you, fellas, for um, joining us uh, from Waimana and Ruatoki in Eastern Bay of Pliny. Um, and I've been doing art my whole life. I attribute a lot of my art influence to my dad, who's an artist as well. And yeah. I grew up in a house where I got to see his artwork and got to see him doing art heaps. And the stuff that he was doing was way, way, way better than the stuff that I saw at school and books and stuff. So, and for me, that was normal, you know, seeing extraordinary art. Like Atua Māori, he did this drawing. There's this one in particular that he did when he was at high school, I believe. And it was just an A4 drawing. And he had Moko, Tumatauinga, Tāne Mahuta, Tangaroa. Um... I think it was just him, yeah, on this paper. And I remember just looking at it all the time. And little did I know how much that would influence me in later life. Um, was it was and my like earliest, pencil or um, pen? Yeah, pencil, bro. Paint? Yeah, pencil yeah. just on paper. And the paper yeah. was just like normal photocopy paper, you know, just yeah. standard so. 50 or 30 GSM, you know, yeah. lightweight paper. Yeah. And um, yeah, so... That's just a little bit of a framing of the environment that I grew up in. Um, it was a bound to be me or one of my siblings, you know, to be an artist, yeah. you know, professional artist, just because of how we were brought up. Um, and my art, my dad was my art teacher at primary school as well. Oh, that's even um, better. Yeah, 
he used to enter me in art competitions all the time, did really well. And one of the things that I didn't know would affect me later was being naturally talented. Like it's it's cool being naturally talented, but one of the downsides about being naturally naturally talented is you sort of get used to things going your way all the time. You know, it might sound arrogant, but this is just how it went. Yeah. You know, and it was it, it was normal for me to do well, and then when I got a bit older, it made me like we're about eighteen, nineteen. I got a big head, like not outwardly big yeah. head, um, but internally, like how I was talking to myself, I was like, "Yeah, I'm better than everyone." You know, like yeah. there's I think there's a thin line between that's confidence good, and... good confidence, yeah. um, and then there's a, another line where it's you look at people and you judge them based on their abilities you know what I mean yeah. and they ended up failing at some things when I was about 19 and then my I sort of had two options when was to get defensive and say no nah, they don't know I, I mean you know? I mean <laughs> or the other, mean other, other yeah, yeah, bro. <laughs> exactly and then the other option was oh maybe there's something to it maybe I'm I don't know everything maybe yeah. I'm all shit and not all shit like as in give up yeah. but all shit as in you don't know anything yet, you know, yeah, you're just yeah. getting started, you know, and then, um, yeah, it was a bit of a pivotal moment in terms of being unteachable. So I went from being unteachable to going, oh, far out. What if I go do the 180? What can I learn? And then I ended, that that's what led into that exhibition that you're talking about. Wow. That's why I did heaps of different things because of that being willing to just go, oh, fine, let me just try that. Let me try that. Hmm. Even if I'm shit at it. You know? <laughs> but you um, go, yeah, so that, that was sort of the yeah, bro, trajectory. And, um, and going back going back there, bro, because I, I think this is something that, you know, a lot of people might, you know, sort of come up, you know, come up against or whatever is like, what were you thinking? What were you feeling at that point? You know, when you, when you did have the fail or the, you know, you, you didn't quite crack it like you were used mm. to cracking it. Like, where did that go? Did that feel like? Oh, so it was this one paper in particular when I was at Wintech in my second year, 2012. And the paper was split up into two assignments. And in order to pass the paper, you had to get 50% overall. So you yep. could get like a 10% on one paper. And then you could get 40% on the second paper. And you'd pass the whole the whole thing oh on the second assignment you could pass the whole thing and i failed that first paper and it was a the thing that killed me was it was a drawing one and if there's anything out of all artistic abilities that i'm that i pr- prided myself on it was drawing yeah that's the thing i could do better than any of the other things that i tried and then um yeah i remember when the the tutor she told me she's like oh you didn't pass whatever and she had a good reason for it, it was because i i wasn't good at um, doing workbook and experimentation for me it was just oh yeah this is the brief yeah I've got an idea on my head that's it I don't want to do development Yeah, all I feel like steps. that's a waste of time let me yeah, just do yeah, yeah. spend yeah. four weeks on this thing just doing one piece and by four weeks I mean three and a half weeks doing nothing and then a half a week doing it and then yeah. making it look like it was four weeks worth um, yeah bro so my media reaction bro I almost cried when she told me because yeah. I had never failed like that yeah. So I was I was standing was on this glass pillar. Day. Yeah, bro. And then yeah. she told me, and I remember it was an afternoon class. No, it was a morning class, I lie. So this was around lunchtime. Mm. And I remember when she was talking in my head, I was just saying, shut up, shut up. Just, okay, get out of here so it. I can leave. I don't want to yeah, hear, I don't hear it. it. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I jumped straight on my skateboard, skated home. Yeah. Blimmin, I think I cried. Yeah, I cried when I got home. Yeah. And then I let it all marinate. And it was, I don't know how much time had passed. I want to say months had passed before yeah. I thought about it properly. And I was like, far actually, that's exactly what I needed. Cause and and why, do you think, why do you think you didn't just go straight to defensive? Like, nah, you don't know, lady. You know, well, what made you make that shift to shit? Okay, maybe I don't know everything. And then end up being like teachable, like you say. Oh, bro, it was because um, in the next assignment, I had I wanted to prove her wrong. Mm-hmm. And then in doing so, I ended up doing like working hard and working hard at the stuff that she failed me for. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I, I didn't I didn't know it at the time. And it was experimenting. And because the whole point of one of those assignments is to create the best piece of work that you can create through experimentation. And that's experimenting um, in every way you can. And you do research, find out how to go far, wide, and deep. And for yep. me, I was super shallow. And then I, I did it and did really, really well on that assignment. And it was after that I was like, "Fuck, you know what? If she, if I had passed that last one, right. I wouldn't have done yeah. anywhere yeah. near as uh, as well as that, you know. And I wouldn't have learned those those lessons about experimentation because I came up with way better stuff than my initial idea, which is the whole point of it all. Yeah, yeah bro. So it was that. That was the beginning of me actually learning far up. Shut up, bro. You don't know. Yeah. Just listen to them. That's why they." That's why they're in those positions they're in, you know. Yeah. And there's always there's always something to learn from from ev- anyone. Eh? It's always. like we'll never we'll never stop learning. Yeah. And, and that's that's when... they name that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was the cool thing. Imagine if you knew everything. Boring. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so bro. so that took you you at Wintech and then that's kind of what led into that exhibition. Can you tell the fun about your exhibition, bro? That was a cool yes. exhibition. That, yeah. that was mean. Yeah, no. So, um, at the end of a three-year bachelor degree in media arts, if you're doing visual arts, you uh, usually you do it. You have an exhibition, especially if you're doing fine art. Sorry. Yeah. Usually you have an exhibition, and it's a group exhibition between everyone in your your classes. Yeah. And usually you can only hand in one or two pieces because they have it on campus because there's not enough space yeah. for everybody to have heaps of pieces. And I remember I had heaps of pieces that I wanted to submit for it. Yeah. So I said, actually, instead of doing that, let me see if I can get an ex- uh, a space, like a, a, space, a yeah. gallery space in town somewhere that I could hire for a few mm. days so I can put in all the pieces that I wanted to. Then yeah. I hit up the bro Craig McClure, who was uh, curating at that spot. Um, Draw Ink, it was called. Drawing. It's not yeah. there anymore. And yeah. then, um, so that happened. And then I was like, oh, yep, cool. I've got this. I've got two rooms. These are the styles that I wanted to do. And I wanted it to be a, a culmination of all the stuff that I had learned. Yeah. While That's I was at Wintech. Like, uh, yeah. Like a, yeah. There's, there's yeah, a, exactly. Because yeah. one point. of the things that, <laughs> yeah, bro. One of the things that struck me about um, studying art, or I can only speak from my own experience, was heaps of students who were there. The first year that I saw them, they were doing, let's say, for example, painting flowers. Yeah. And then at the end of the third year, they were still painting flowers. And, you know, like to each their own. But yeah. for me, it was a time to um, just go wild, really. Just mm. try stuff. Like go use every th- resource that they have. And I did. And I'm, I'm yeah. glad that I failed pretty much right in the middle of my degree. So if I didn't, bro, I would have just stuck to stuff that I was good at. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stayed in a comfortable way. And that's, that's that kind yeah, of bro. Um, learning journey, you know, pushing yeah. into the edges. Like that, I remember hearing this quoted or that um, it's the, at the edges of anything that that's where all the growth is. So, say the edge mm. of the ocean and the land, that's where all the yep. you know all of the matata, all of that mm. growth are. At the edge of the forest and the you know and the and the grassy plains, that's where a lot of the manu and stuff are. So yeah. it's at our edges that you know Very. a lot of that learning happens. Yep. So pretty cool, bro. Yeah, we all know that. Eh? We've, we've all heard that saying before. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So um, you pushed to the yeah. edge and you got the space. And what was it like, though? Because was that your first exhibition ever? Um, it was my first earlier? solo, my first solo show. I had been yeah. in shows before, like submitted <clears throat> single pieces, but this one was way different. And I remember yeah. thinking too, I, I had planned it all out of my head. I was like, "Yep, I'll finish these pieces. I'll go," because that was that was the very last day of of my studies was the exhibition. Wow. And I had it on, I had it on the same night. Oh, the day, the night after that, the, everyone in my year did this. So I think everyone was on a Thursday and then I did yeah. mine on the Friday. Yeah. And then that was, yeah, the last thing to do in my head. I was like, oh, yep, finish my pieces, do the exhibition, get drunk and have a party. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> stayed up all night the night before because yeah. the sculpture that I did just super, super underestimated how how much time and effort it takes and oh, for for the 
amount of detail that I wanted in it. Yeah. Can like you describe what they were though for the funny? Like, I yeah, yeah. Get a picture, but like, so all the pieces. See it. Yeah. Yeah. Or the sculpture. So there were. Sure. The sculpture that I did was I don't know if anyone watching is familiar with my Tangaroa and Tane Mauta paintings. And they're like real comic influence. Like they're literally taken from the Hulk. Yeah. But the painting that I did of Tane Mauta is a sculpture of him. I've still got it here too. It's a bit broken down there. Um, but it was made out of oil-based clay. Uh, it was about... Yeah, that one. So I did a sculpture of that. Oh, it's not in of that um, tiny mahuta. Epic. And I learned how to sculpt with oil-based clay while I was doing that sculpture. <laughs> it was bloody... It was hard, bro. And it wasn't I was any like, simple sculpture. Yeah, sure, was like, I can do that. Hard out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. And yeah. I think that's like now that we're on that thread. Yeah. I think um it's probably a good thing sometimes to be a bit naive. You know, think that you can think that you'll it'll be all good. It's like, yeah, yeah I reckon I can do that. Because yeah. sometimes you'd never try it if if yeah, you just looked at it and went, nah, that looks way too hard. And for me, bro, that that feels like a Maui trait. You know, mm. like when, you know, this this trying things out, this innovating, this, you know, being a bit cheeky, being a bit edgy. Mm. I, I feel like those are all, um, you know, heahuatanga no Maui. And I mm. feel like you grabbing that clay and like, oh, what does this do? Or how, how does this happen? I feel like that's a Maui thing. And I feel like that's a really strong trait amongst us Maori. You know, mm. it's a really um, common way that a lot of us learn. Um, Have a tutu, yeah. Yeah, have a tutu. Bro, I didn't mm. train in photography and now I'm a photographer. <laughs> you know, I just, I was a tutu. You were a tutu in your clay yeah, and, and then suddenly sculpted a masterpiece. So you just can't, give it a you can't jam. learn unless you try it, eh? <laughs> yeah, bro, straight up. Yeah. You know, obviously there's, you th dream of the ideal circumstances and things before you leap into something, but it's really like that, eh? Yeah. yeah. You know, most of the See? time it's, something random and you just go oh far wow. yeah bro i have a try <laughs> i don't <laughs> yeah. know if i can do it or not yeah so you had that exhibition bro and then from there um where did you go i remember i i, I commissioned the art piece and i'm so mm. so grateful for your beautiful mahi toy that piece of maui tamanui te rā up the top and the, and the karera down below mm. love that piece bro but um did you go more into moko then was that straight after or was that like where did your um, journey take you from there? So the, I went to Palmy with my darling after that. That's right. That's 2014. Right. Training, eh? It was the start of 2014. Yeah, we went down there because she went to Messi. And um, I worked at a tattoo shop down there for about 10 months. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, ended up leaving and working for myself. That was pretty much the start of working from home, you know, yeah. which is still what I do now. Um but it probably was, and I was down. We were down there for three years. It was a, what would you call it? It was a strange time. Like it was, I don't know. It just felt there was a, a big mix of being directionless, having direction. Like I remember getting depressed down there, and I didn't even know it too at the time. It wasn't yeah. until years later that I looked back I'm and so I was like, "Fire up, yeah, bro." But um, yeah, learned some some valuable things um sort of started honing and refining um the things that i wanted to do and it's still doing it now you know i think yeah. it's important as as artists to learn not only what you like but learning what you don't like hmm. you know what i mean and so yeah so i learned a lot of what i didn't like um what sort of things i didn't want to spend time creating one of them yeah. just for an example is like design work yeah like i've That's done a little game. bit of design work yeah and that one of the things that i learned about design difference between being a designer or illustrator and an artist is designers have a brief you know criteria that you work towards yeah and um it's a collaboration between you and a client whereas being an artist you create it's most of the time it's the opposite yeah. you create whatever you want you want to yep. say something, create a piece of artwork, however you want, in whatever style you want. Whoever likes it, likes it. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. Yep. You know, and then I had a try both ways, and I figured that art, 
being an artist was more my style. So I didn't really like doing the same thing over and over and doing iterations over and over, especially when yeah. you uh, collaborate with people who are paying you, but they have a million ideas and they don't have a creative brain. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you're trying to meet them halfway and a lot of times the compromises you have to make is makes you hate it or makes you not enjoy the creative process. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so that's just an example of one of the things that I learned during my time yeah. down there. Good lesson. And so you were... Yeah, bro. You were in... Yeah, you were down there, you were doing um, moko and you were doing other art, obviously. Yeah, you were doing painting and things, things <laughs> yeah. making yeah. prints, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, like, what was the next big thing for you? At that point, because you've been doing moko for ages now, like mm. it's, it's it's been a solid solid amount of time, and bro, I really, oh, I'm I'm grateful to be a recipient of one of your one of yeah, your yeah, um, yeah. moko pieces, but um, um, I know so are a lot of people. So you you, yeah. you dove into moko quite heavy, but as well as yep. that, you know, you were you were doing other things as well, eh? Mm. Yeah, bro. So the the next biggest thing after oh during my time down there actually was the Atua series. 2015, uh, like the end of 2014, my darling was like, oh, you should do a, a challenge, like an art challenge or something every week just to be consistent um, on social media. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll draw um, a tour Māori. So that was the start, that 2015. So every week I did a sketch all the way up to like three weeks out from the end of the year. So I missed like three weeks. Wow. And I... Right at the end of the year, my older brother got married in Aussie, and I was yeah. just in holiday mode. I was like, ah, all good. Almost made it. But... Yeah. So I did Pick that. Thanks to um, for that idea, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hard out, bro. And it was yeah. actually, it's funny because that reminds me of another memory with Mr. G. One of the times we caught up with him in Hamilton, a sound piece of advice that he gave me. He was like, um, if there's pretty much, oh, this is not word for word, but from mm. my memory, it was. Um, as an artist, um, try and find your thing, you know, try and find the, the niche or the, um, area of art that you want to focus on and that you want to be known by. Yeah. And I remember experimenting heaps with different styles and different subject matter. And then at that, when I got to that 2015, I was like, oh, <clears throat> maybe I'll be the fellow who draws to a Māori. And it, bro, it was funny because, you know, that goes back to the start of our conversation to that drawing that my dad did, you know. Yeah. And him bringing me up on fantasy art and comic book art. So yeah. it was a combination of all of those things, me having done moko for a few years up to this point. So it was a combination of all of those. And yeah, I just, so you actually like, infused your moko yeah, bro, yeah. Into, into those illustrations, eh? Yeah, bro. So <laughs> and that was a bit of a... Um, like uh, felt like a shift and something had clicked at that time. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, no, this this is stuff that I like doing. Because mm. yeah, every time I saw um, Atua Māori depicted, there, there weren't many that looked like my dad's ones. Yeah, and those those are in my mind were like, yeah, those ones are the meanest. Yeah, you know, until I had gotten old enough to be able to yeah, yeah, yeah. until I had gotten old enough to that. to draw what I could. See in my did, you, did your did your pups you know have a have a yarn with you about your auto drawings? Uh yeah yeah he's a few times we've we've yeah. talked about it well, and his was nearly as good as mine son oh, no. <laughs> see it's not very he's if you know him he's he's a bit of a joker so yeah. and yeah he says that but yeah. he says like yeah no that's that's mean I remember the first ever time he said something like that when I was a kid at primary school and um, one of the cousins it was for a colouring competition she said um, oh he's mean as a matua he'll probably be better than you soon or something like that Yeah, I didn't hear her say it he told yeah. me yeah. and then he just said yeah he will and I remember when he told me that I was just like far out yeah. and thinking like there's no way yeah. and he getting older I was like oh he was just gave me the alley-oop yeah. <laughs> nah, that's yeah. massive and then so you know, from from this from this journey, bro. How did we end up in NFTs? <laughs> oh, bro! Like, like was there so, a step, was there another step before then? So, like, in terms of your big big projects, I also you know you did the moko for mokos. 
Um, mm, mm. Hey, Papa, you have done, you know, big murals. I love, love, love your fellows, you and um, Poi, your fellows mural at um, and Hana. And kiri <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Koto Kohana, that's right. Um, you know, you've, you've done solid pieces like that. Um, mm. Were there any other kind of uh, like landmarks that led you, you know, before, before this space? Um, what else was there? Yeah, there's, there's been a few other things like dabbling, probably when I got into videography. Yeah. I got right. into making YouTube videos and that. Because the yeah. thing that I liked about that was it wasn't about creating static images, it was about creating yeah, a story moving with moving images, yeah. Which is yeah. way different. Still now it's 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 um not easy. I don't think it'll ever be easy. Yeah. Try to had a little dab with photography. Not my cup of tea, bro. So I'll leave that to you, brother. <laughs> um, um, did, now actually, another big one was when I bought my iPad 2016, mm, ora, just after Easter. I was yeah. after the two way day, and that was like game changer. Look at that. Like, and then since then, after I got that, pretty much immediately was when I started doing those illustrations for Rangi, those Matariki yeah, ones. Yeah. yeah. And because I, I had already started some on paper, like yeah. pencil on paper. And I remember thinking, no, this doesn't look how I want it to look. Because yeah. I wanted it to be white on black paper. Yeah. But if you all know black paper, it's it's not black. It's like dark gray. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I had this particular way that I saw it in my head and it didn't look like that. And then the iPad bro answered all of those questions. Yeah. So, yeah, that the shift to creating artwork on, on the iPad was game changer look still serving me now yeah yeah I don't... six years later bro and that's yeah, one of your, think... your main illustration tools now eh? it's yeah, been bro. cool watching like... your lives your your kind of your tutorials yeah. um so yeah. if you know if you're wanting tutorials um on how to use an ipad procreate um definitely tune into the bros channels because you've got <laughs> yeah really really good tips and again it's it's our people teaching our people it's us, us teaching us each other yeah so yeah bro yeah, bro. yeah respect that um were there any others i think i think those are the main ones yeah and then um, so like yeah, how did yeah. you you know from that sort of background how did you how did you hear about nfts you know like um i think i was drawing like cartoony looking things for experiments and people kept saying bro that looks like an nft and i was like what the hell is that yeah you know and then like i had regularly started getting Fellas like comment, bro, you should do NFTs. I was like, bro, I don't know what that is. Overseas people, yeah, yeah, Maori fellas. <clears throat> um, and I, th- I think a few of them lived there in Aussie, yeah, so you know, they're already in the crypto space. Um, and then one of my bros I went to high school with, Levi, yeah, he sent me a message about, um, and his, his bro is two mates, they actually work together, and then they, um, he just told me about the auctions that they have. And how much money they fundraised for charity over one weekend. I don't know if it was over one weekend or over a few weekends. But bro, it was like, it was over 100 grand Australian. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what the hell? You got my attention now. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then I started talking to him. Bro. I was like, bro, what the, what the hell is this? Like, And he just gave me a little load, like little rundown. I was like, oh, bro, uh, it's going to be a Halloween theme. Um, it's going to be this weekend or something. So like, within seven days and um bro do you know how to mint an nft and jump on our discord and i was like bro what does mint an nft mean and what the hell is this called what is it <laughs> yeah, 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 I <laughs> and i was like bro you might as well be, be speaking another language i don't even know what you're saying to me because and then they told me what they were yeah, yeah. bro yeah. and then i i like youtube how to mint an nft and then at the same time, he was telling me, oh, it's on Phantom Blockchain. I was like, wow, what? What is Phantom Blockchain? Bro, everything was just getting overwhelming. Yeah. And then, funnily enough, at the same time was when I started streaming. I did my first stream on Twitch. Yeah. Like using um, OBS, so like streaming software. So it was like, bro, learning English and maths for the first time. At the same time. At the same time. <laughs> whilst preparing for a maths and English exam in a week's time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah bro, it was, it was hectic. So it was through my bro. My bro, Levi, I went to high school with. Yeah. And then, so, so you heard about 
um, NFTs. You did that first one with that um, with that um, Halloween Two piece. Minutes. Oh, oh yeah, 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 with, um, yeah, yeah. With the Halloween piece. Yep. Yeah. And then. And then from there, yeah, tell us about Tomb Heads because, you know, what is, who, who are Tomb Heads and how did you get the hookups? Yeah, so Tomb Heads is an NFT artist from Australia. Yeah. And um, so the, the blockchain that him and, and our project, Grimms is, is on is the Phantom blockchain. Yeah. Uh, and he's probably one of the most prevalent um, people in there. And he's huge. Because oh there look there's a the Bro Levi there, there cheer brother. Um, Levi. Thanks for um, introducing him, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he's got this auction house in Discord, and it, there's just a bunch of artists who who sell their artwork and people bid on their artwork. Yeah. Um, Can you all different what styles. Is? Can you yeah, so what Discord is? Um, anybody who's on here, you probably got a Messenger, Facebook Messenger. So if you imagine Messenger. How you, how you can send messages and pictures to each other. Well, I imagine you just have more capabilities. So you could have folders for the different types of messages you talk to each other about. You could have folders that are only for certain people or you know, certain group chats. Uh, you can send links. So it's real similar to that, but more capability. Um, that's and probably I, an easy way to, to think about it. Yeah, and a lot of the conversations or a lot of the community building around NFTs is all done either on Twitter mm. or it's done in... Um, discord or both yeah 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 bro. So back to tomb heads sorry for that uh information yeah no nah, no nah, all good bro that's <laughs> a good point so look we're doing the assuming everyone knows yeah yeah yeah. but yeah so um yeah so did got this piece ready i think i ended up doing four i got four pieces ready yeah and um i remember talking to one of the fellas in there about securing a spot as an artist on the next auction. Yep. And he's like, yep. Um, and then we were just talking about how many pieces I wanted to submit. And um, he said, you could do like two or three or something or two or four. And I was like, oh, can I do four? Like, obviously you want to try and yeah, yeah. do as many as you can. Yeah, bro. So yeah, he gave me four spots. And at, at the same time, I was trying to think about, um, what I wanted to create. Yeah. And like still learning about NFTs, learning about NFT projects. And I was, was like, what am I going to make? Like how, how far away was the auction? Bro, probably it ended up being about two weeks away. Oh, lucky. <laughs> two or three weeks away. Um, yeah. And the, the first NFT that I ever created, I did a I did a stream of the creation of the whole thing. Yeah. But it was a super, super detailed piece. And then I was, when I finished it, I ended up going, actually, I think I don't want to submit this piece. I think I want to submit the start of a project, which ended up being yeah. Graphgrams. Yeah. Um, bro, and it was hectic. I was working with um, the bro Cobb, um, who I met in um, one of the, the group chats that I'm in with Levi. And he, bro, super nice fella. He's like, oh, bro, if you need any um, Phantom to mint your thing, I've got some. Bro, he sent me some some money to like mint my first NFT and just yeah. helped me out. And we ended up talking to each other and just... He ended up making a contract, and a, a contract is for anybody listening who doesn't know is kind of like um, the computer code that secures and says your pieces in NFT, and yeah. it's got all the proof. And you put it onto the blockchain, and it proves that it, it was created by this person on this date. Yeah, creates yeah, it's the fuck up for that piece. Yeah, and it's, uh, like certificate of authenticity. Yeah, yeah. So people think yeah. NFTs are the jpeg or whatever yeah the mm. jpeg is attached to it so technically it is but actually the nft is the code that goes behind it that holds yeah, that which, yeah like a digital certificate of authenticity yeah. <clears throat> they did the broker yeah, bro. for you for your friend, yeah um grams yeah he created our like a a unique one specifically for graph grams um and all and then i ended up hooking up with another another bro d He's from Fakatani, and um, bro, we ended up just working together and figuring stuff out while we were doing it, and bro, it was super hectic. Like I can't yeah. even describe the it. Time, it was, the time would have just been yeah, here. yeah, bro. Like not enough hours in the day was they stay up all night, wake up, you know, do it again, mind fried. Yeah, 
just running on fumes and then it led all the way up to the actual auction yep. which was about it started at about 7 a.m in z time but i think i was my pieces were auctioned at around 10 yeah, yeah around 10 o'clock i, I think my one. pieces were auctioned yeah, yeah yeah and it was bro it was out of it you know it was hectic because there was you were there, yeah. on the discord as well and yeah. i was like what is this place like, yeah. what is this thing? And, and these fellows that are just like message 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 like fast 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 and then someone's talking at the same time you can hear this guy talking mm. and it was like oh what is this and then it was like yeah, yeah when they said to hone and then we'll invite you up and then you got to have a bit of a yeah no mm, yeah so yeah to everyone listening in discord they have um like a voice channel so you know how you're looking at the chat right now um, you can only see words, but at the same time, you can listen to people talking. So if you imagine you're listening to us, but you can't see us. So there'll be someone, the, what is he called? The auctioneer. The yeah, the auctioneer. Yeah, yeah, the host. And he says, oh, yeah, this is pieces from Tony or whatever. Um, let's start bidding at whatever phantom, which is the, the dollar in, in the phantom blockchain. So he'll say, let's start bidding at 50 phantom. And then people just message in the chat a number. And that's their bid. So it just keeps going until he says, going, going, gone. Um, just just for a little bit of info on the people who have never been into Discord, just what it, what it was like. And I, I remember just feeling, bro, it was, it was crazy. It was mean seeing you fellas there, you know, seeing people that I personally know in that yeah. space who were all brand new as me. Yeah. You know, like I, I didn't feel hey, like I was the only I, only newbie. The newbie, bro. Backstory: I had to go and figure out how to get a MetaMask, how to get a Phantom. <laughs> what is a Phantom? How to get a Phantom? <laughs> get it onto my thing, and I'd put like I don't know three hundred bucks on or something like that because I was like, oh yeah, I'll be able to support and buy one of the bros pieces, and then get in there, <laughs> and then the starting bid was above above my pay grade, and I was like. <laughs> oh, I can't even play. <laughs> like, like, what are we up to? Oh no! <sighs> but I was stoked, days, bro, because I just seen like as soon as you know, like mm. there's all different types of art and stuff like that in the auction. And then I think you know your art has a real punch to it, bro. It's super clean. Mm. It's it's you know it's beautiful to look at. It's strong. And um, I just seen the the bids go boom, 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 boom. You know, like climb up first yeah. piece for what? I was like. A thousand, thousand oh, no. if phantom, yeah. a yeah. thousand phantom, a thousand yeah. phantom, and that's that's a lot. That's that's yeah, an awesome, yeah. awesome first sale. Um, it was so, nuts. Yeah, I, was, I was jumping up and down for you, bro. It was awesome, bro. I was I was literally in my head. I was like, I'm stoked if these just go for fifty, <laughs> yeah. you know, or twenty. I was just stoked just to have them in front of people's eyes who were in that space. Yeah, you know, like even if I had to just give them away, I would have been sweet. Because yeah. I knew it wasn't, it was just the beginning, you know. Yeah. It was like, oh, it just whipped my feet. Yeah. And then for it to go that way, it was surreal. I remember me and my darling before walk, it's just like, fuck, I just had to go and breathe. It's just like, <laughs> you were holding this is, your breath the whole time. Yeah, yeah. This is out of it. No, yeah, bro. So that, so that learning curve at the fun, that's, that's something that's very real and we understand because we're mm. still in it. Like when that we're not oh, experts, fuck. we're still learning every day. Um, I still feel I like we know nothing. Intention. Well, yeah. Well, that's the intention of this. You know, these these wananga and our um, blockchain navigators um, Discord is so that we can learn together and kind of you know mm. share those share those akuranga. Um, yep. We've got a question um, from Pune. Um, when you say the NFT holds Papa, what rights do the owner of said art have to it? It's a great question and. Um, Right, you've got, got some for Yeah, so um, <clears throat> it can be different for every single contract. It can be different. You can say, you can give it whatever rights you want. So for the, the creator of it, they can say that they have full creative rights. You know, say so for example, if I made an NFT of um, my face and then I said in the contract, whoever owns this, so whoever buys it and owns it, they have full commercial rights. So that means you can print it on whatever you want, turn it into whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever money you make is your money. Like the eight <clears> states <throat> so, um, the, the yeah. Board Yacht Club and I think the Crypto Punks, I think in those mm. contracts, they've given the holders of those the right to 
you know, they can make merch, they can make hats and yeah. t-shirts and things like that with their particular one on it. They can't make one yeah. with someone else's. Um, yeah. So if they own that um, NFT, but it's also mm. different, like um, our bro, Richie Mills, um, who's a dope photographer, um, mm. who's been, you know, DJ Von Richie. In this, yeah, yeah, some man. Um, anyway, he was telling me that, you know, as a photographer, I can sell the NFT of a, of a whakahua but then I still retain the copyright. I still own the rights mm. and I can still license that image. I can still sell that image as prints and things like that. So it's it's actually something that's really good for the artist because in the past, mm. once you sell your piece, like only he could sell a piece to me for a hundred bucks when he was just starting out. And then later on down the track, I sell it to someone for you know a thousand and then some art dealer gets a hold of it and later on when when honu is real famous they sell it for ten thousand or a hundred thousand mm. honu still only got the first hundred bucks the thing with nfts is you can write into that smart contract that each time it's sold the artist gets ten percent and it's not something that say if i on sold it i get the money <clears throat> and then i have to give it to honu because it's written into the smart contract of um of the blockchain as soon as that sale is made 10 percent of that money just goes immediately to mm. um to Honui. so this is a game changer for artists yeah um going forward like musicians artists like it's it's, it's really important um technology any and, creator of intellectual yeah. property yeah yeah it's a win so it takes out middlemen you know it takes for example yeah. like um with spotify like i don't know that the details of it but you know basically you have a musician they create music have a time however many times someone streams determines how much money if they get money yeah but spotify gets money you know from you using their platform yeah, so yeah. what happens you know what what this um allows artists to do and musicians to do creatives is you create the the piece someone else can can buy it and or you, and then if it just keeps going on, if people just keep listening to it forever because it's built on the blockchain, and the the good the thing about blockchain is it's secure, you know that that's why it's so huge. Um, and it's transparent forever, too. no matter what people do. Yeah, as long as it gets used um, and passed forward, it, there's always a percentage that goes back to the um, the original creator. You know, and that's the cool thing is generations and generations from now from something we did today yeah great 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 grandchildren if we're still around you know can still benefit from stuff that we did today you know which yeah. is crazy so like picasso's picasso's um mokopuna might not necessarily yeah. get any royalties from mm. any of the art that that he made or any of those big artists mm. back then but say artists now like the whole new creates art um, when it's time for his mokopuna, if he hands down his crypto keys, um, then by the time it comes to his mokopuna, they're automatically, they don't have to do anything. Um, they don't mm. have to chase anyone up. Like APRA has to chase places up for um, royalties and music. They don't have mm. to do any of that. It'll automatically um, you know, be deposited into their wallet, which mm. would be pretty pretty cool. Imagine that your your great, Bro, great, great model was a, was a mean artist. So it heaps of NFTs and then suddenly there's just all this <laughs> this puta just residuals. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just it's just like that, eh? You know, it's like residuals and there's no way around it, you know? Like as soon yeah. as someone makes a transaction with that thing, whether they like it or not, it's part of it is going to the original um creator. Yeah. Or their final or whoever they you know, they give their crypto key to like you're talking about. Long or their wallet key. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing too, you know, if you lose your, let's say it's a digital safe with your your money in it, crypto, if you lose that code or that key to that, it might as well be gone because <laughs> you can't break into it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's secure in that way too. Yeah. And the, the Be The Rich is talking about, um, so in terms of the NFT for the graph grams, what's the, um, where's that sitting, bro? Yeah, bro. So um, we haven't even actually gone into the. Um, let's let's start at the start. The technicalities. Graph eh? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, 
What do you mean? It started to start. Like started, started to start. To start tell off. people about about Grafton's both. What oh yeah. So um. And... Sorry, I'm just um redoing <laughs> the batteries on my camera. That all good. So Graf Grimms is a um <laughs> is a yeah project that I created, and it was based on um an old creation that I made back in 2012 when I was an art student at Wintec, and it was the initial idea was a girl who's a graffiti artist and her teddy bear, uh, and I created four panels of artwork back then. And those were the seeds for this whole project. And I remember thinking, the start of this whole NFT journey, I was like, man, what am I going to create? Saw all of these projects that were getting big, um, especially Bored Apes. And I was like, whoa, what can I do? Um, what unique spin can I have? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do that. Because that's, that's a style that I really enjoy. Um, like illustrative, kind of cartoony style. And it was something that I hadn't, being able to do much of like in my art life especially as an adult you know trying to make money and stuff yeah. um so yeah that was the beginning of it and then i was graph grams is short for graffiti gremlins um and i like thinking back now like i didn't even mean to have a name that was kind of rhymey and both started with the letter g like how heaps of names are now yeah uh, heaps of project names and, and um, heaps of comic names and things as well. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. Because that was part of it, yeah. It was a bit of honoranga to comic book heroes and characters with the, the repetitive name and stuff. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I knew, oh, yeah, I'll do the teddy bear. Which, and because it was fun. And at the same time, I was trying to think like, oh, how far can this go? Or, you know, what else could it grow into? Could I turn it into? Um, we did... After we did those auctions, I did. I think we did three auctions, sold eight pieces at auction, uh, and then that led up to our first drop, which was five hundred pieces, which was towards the end of last year. And um, all during that time, we were wondering how many total pieces in this whole collection are they going to be? Because you know the the standard was ten thousand, and then it was turning into seven thousand seven hundred seventy seven. Which was becoming a, a different standard. I was like, oh, yeah. 10,000. Like talking with the bros, I was like, wow, that's pretty heaps, 10,000. And then I was There's like, oh, what about 5,000? Yeah. yeah, bro. And that was the thing too. I was thinking, wow, can I create 10,000 of the same thing with a little bit of, you know, difference? And still have love for it. <laughs> and still have love for it. You know, it was, it was yeah. at the same time, it was kind of that part of me that hated yeah. design, which was, reiteration or doing the same thing over and over again or what felt like doing the same thing over and over again it was, it was yeah it was like oh fuck this is fun to do it now but i don't know if yeah. it'll be fun doing that many of them, of them. and so yeah. yeah bro so at the same time i was trying to figure out how can i still do five thousand pieces but still keep it exciting and fresh mm. for me like purely as an artist it's something that I can enjoy while I'm doing it. And I don't want it to just be only grind. I want it yeah. to be fun too. And then so we started thinking, oh, let's let's break it down. Instead of doing 5,000 pieces and releasing them all at the same time, let's break it down into to 10, 10 drops or 500 just yeah, to make it a bit cool. more manageable. And, and that it also way, keeps it more interesting for us is the, is the community. Yeah, bro. Fun, no way. Yeah. We can, we can do spend a short amount of time you know relatively short amount of time and then release another relatively short amount of time then release instead of spend a year and then release yeah you know which was probably what which it would have been the engagement we as well eh? yeah bro and then at the same time because originally i was just going to do just box which is the teddy bear character for the whole project and then i was thinking about it more while i was working away i was like actually no nah, like i want to do the girl in the story and at, at the time she had no name she was just a girl i didn't even put any thought into her character so i just made up this story ended up calling her shari yeah and then i was like oh what if we do a different character for every episode oh, and every we called drop. the drops episodes yeah uh and then um 
And then I thought, man, could I even just do that one style for that whole time for 5,000 pieces? And I was like, nah, let me try this. And then, you know, it changed into, let me do a different style and a different character in the same world. Each episode. For each episode, yeah. And then all at the same time too was figuring out a storyline for these characters because I had had a look around at other projects and they heaps of them had stories. Um, Most of them were pretty short, like just like a paragraph or two just to have a little bit of context for your pieces. Um, But you wanted to actually build a world out of it. Yeah, bro. For me, it was like an opportunity, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm into um, like movies and games and I love, love stories. Um, And you love Easter eggs, eh, bro? Like, bro, I love Easter eggs. Like, tell, Easter tell eggs people about because this isn't just like okay, here's a story. A happens, then she gets to B. Mm. Like all of yeah, your yeah. characters, all of the different things. Can you talk talk to us about those, bro? Yeah, bro. So, um, what I love about movies and games and storytelling is um, when they can be, or when the the creators of those stories are invested and they take care when they create create their stories and when they reference other things in pop culture or other things in in film other things in gaming and they do it as kind of like a little nod to yeah. anyone who cares yeah. you know what i mean and i'm anyone one of those people who cares and notices they anybody yeah bro because for anyone who doesn't care about that sort of stuff it would, they'll it's just go over their head and be like oh yeah that was cool but they didn't know what it was a reference to and for me i love that sort of stuff when i watch movies i immediately after it i watch youtube i go yeah. watch interviews what did this symbol mean? behind the scenes yeah. Yeah. yeah why they did what they did and i don't know why it's enjoyable for me but it is yeah so um, you to, and so you yeah, built bro, it into this project then, eh? yeah built it into this project and trying to and the the different thing about actually being on the other side of it, you know, because I've only been a consumer before of mm. stories and things like that. But being on the creation side, bro, way harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. So, way like, harder. tell us, like, what are what are some of the nods that you've put in? Um, yeah, what are some of the nods that you've put into this this first episode, bro? Yeah, bro. So, um, box and the original story that I created. Because, so he's a graffiti teddy bear and he was with, he was a toy of this girl Shari and the little yeah. basic story I made up 10 years ago was she was doing graffiti in a territory that wasn't her own in like a dystopian kind of future. Yeah. She ends up dying and then her astral form goes inside this teddy bear and then he's like, he wakes up, comes to life and then he wants to go get revenge, find out whoever killed her because she ended up getting pushed off this bridge so that was the, yep. the bones of the story and um one of the, the big influences for that was a game on ps2 called getting up which was a graffiti game yeah um and i had figured like far out this is like this project is an opportunity to um create and reference a lot of things that i love that i haven't been able to reference in, and um yep. you know draw inspiration from because most of the stuff up to this point that I had done was moldy art. And this was an opportunity for me to like fully step outside of just creating moldy art and, and pretty much like feeding the, the fan love that I have for, oh, you know, the, the nerdy yeah, for gaming and for, um, yeah, yeah nerdy heart that I have for, for movies and gaming and stuff, bro. So yeah, yeah, it, it was, that's it's cool, bro. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just gonna I think I can. Just figuring this out as we go finally, but um I think I can show oh, no. oh yeah, there you go. So this is this is one of the one of the characters. One of the um, first ones, yeah. Yeah, that the bro did. So this is Box and Box has all, all his different iterations, but this is one of them. You wanna tell us about mm. this one, bro? <clears throat> yeah, so that piece right there uh in the first drop that we made 500 there were 16 of them were iconic pieces so they ended up having like a little icon in the bottom right and that was one of the iconic pieces 
Um, but he, him, he's a series of 10. So there was a series of 10 with one icon, and then there was a series of five with another icon, and then there was a one of one with its own icon. Uh, and those those three iconic characters were references to gaming and film, and they were pretty much the full outfit because all the other pieces that I had created had single pieces that were homages to film or gaming, but those iconic ones were whole outfits. And that was obviously Kratos from God of War, if you played that, one of my favorite games of all time. <clears throat> We can hear your goodie in the background too, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you created these Easter eggs, you created these nods yeah. to different things, and each um, different episode is going to be a different character and a different mm. art style. Now, what are the things that you think about, you know, so you've already talked to us, to us about um, wanting to create those sort of Easter eggs, um, mm. wanting to really take care um, in, in the story. Like, this cope up is not just a pump and dump. You're not just trying to mm. make a whole lot of money. What are you trying to do with it? You know, like what are you trying Bro, to do? Trying to, um, it's it's been one of the things that we've been working on a lot like lately is figuring out what we're up to and why we're doing it. You know, and because how I got into this project, bro, it felt like backwards. It was just like, bro. Come jump on this walker, <laughs> you know, do this stuff. And then before I knew it, I was already rowing that walker, but I didn't even know why I was rowing it and where I was rowing it to, you know? Yeah. So it's felt like I've done step two before step one. Yeah. So it's, we're kind of stripped back in at step one at the moment. And we're f doing it to try and create a community of, um, nerds i said <laughs> in, in a recent post yeah. um who love film and film and gaming and storytelling and then um one of the things that's i think is pretty prevalent and pretty obvious now is like nerd culture is is pretty huge now you know like I remember back in the day when um being a nerd was or being a geek was like an insult yeah, you know, and you saw it on movies. Thing. Like it wasn't that prevalent here in Aotearoa, but the, we had our own versions of saying someone was a nerd or a geek. <clears throat> but you know, and for being into like comics or being into like toys, toys, yeah. you know, action yeah. figures or whatever. And then now, like action figures is is huge. Thing, like hey. Marvel movies are huge. Comic book movies are huge. You know, comic book series are huge. Like Game of Thrones. One of the biggest shows ever, and you know, if you think about Game of Thrones, traditionally that would have been just for nerds, you yeah. know, and, into that sort of stuff. But you know, it's it's become part of like normal culture now, and Mainstreaming. like the people who were like nerdy and ticky, they made Facebook, they made Instagram, <laughs> or you know, yeah. they made the blockchain, you know, so all yeah. of that stuff. So it was really we figured it out this week just to dive into that um you know because uh, that's how i feel like i'm like a super nerdy person and like the stuff that i'm into like i'm into it all the way <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean um so like movies and stuff fully into it. so really trying to create a project that is for a community of those sort of people who are into yeah. easter eggs and movies who when they're when they play video games, they watch videos of the developers creating it. They figure out what all the inspirations were for the creation of that game. They know that the director of this movie was also the director of this other movie, which starred this person who was in this other movie. You know, all of yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it's, yeah, creating a, a project that was for those people. And then with that storyline that I'm creating it as well, I wanted to have, you know, a brand new story not a story that is unlike anything else, but a story that's inspired by the things that have made an impact on me, you know, yeah, yeah, and a story that with this community that we can hopefully build, they can say that they were a part of the creation of that story. You know, they can say, yeah, we were, we were in there like with this fellow who had never written a story before, but yeah. he wrote one, he wrote one and we were all in there while it was being created, you know, and it was for, 
nerdy people who like us you know yeah, who yeah. are into watching youtube straight after they watch a movie just to watch a yeah. breakdown you know yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so, bro, so where, that's, do, where do you want this to go bro so you're creating this you know creating the community around it the other thing actually before we go into to our popo um i want to just have a little talk with you about um you know creating the discord when you did that first drop before you did the first drop you created the discord and actually you onboarded a whole lot of people and i really want to meet to like muggins in them like the the, mm, the fano bro. delinquent delinquent like, the fano that were in your bro, discord, boof. Boof, yeah they were helping everyone like the the whole the whole environment in there was real totoko um mm. you know helping people because we didn't know how to get something onto the phantom blockchain or where to get a phantom and then how to mint Bro, I didn't even. Sort of things so like talk to us about the discord and like what your intention was with that and you know bringing a whole lot of people into the space mm. yeah so the bro cob he actually made the discord server yep. because i had no idea like how to make a discord server i didn't even know what was necessary to be in there like how you yeah. got all of those different channels and things yeah i didn't know what was bare minimum so yeah super super stoked that the bro did that and grateful for him yeah. um yeah but then having those people that you just mentioned bro just come on board and be incredibly helpful even like sending phantom to people that they had never met yeah. so they could yeah, buy their good. first you know so they could mint their first nft you know and Bro, it was it was mean to see. It was overwhelming, actually. Yeah. And I've I've messaged like the bros and just said, bro, can't thank you fellas enough. You know. How that wouldn't have. Oh well, well, hey, wouldn't I wouldn't have, have been able to even happened, to yeah. Any, <laughs> if it wasn't yeah, for bro, you know, exactly. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, they really really helped. So big shout out, and, and yeah. that's another thing that I've been noticing in this space is the community is supportive. It's mm. pretty cool. Even in the Twitter space, the NFT community is supportive. Um, mm. You do get some whānau who are a bit clicky on, on one project and sort of bagging mm. another. I don't reckon we need yeah, to do yeah. that at the whānau. I, I reckon, ah. you know, support these ones and support those ones and we can all we can all win together. Yeah, do your thing, so, man. Yeah. There's, there's so, plenty of space for everybody. So heaps of people, for the first time, ever learned anything about nfts because of you because eh? because they're following you mm. in in facebook and instagram in the real world um mm. and then you had to onboard them what was that like for you bro it was exciting because it, it felt less lonely you know yeah. coming into the space because i knew heaps of people that i knew like yourself and you know knew on a personal level and then knew from comments and you know messages on my Instagram or Facebook, like bringing <clears throat> new people over was was cool and um, yeah, bro, it felt felt warm to have felt like having Fano there, you know, felt like going to a new school and everyone came to come to drop you off at school, <laughs> you know, felt like yeah, that, yeah, you know, and um, people already giving bro, you lollies in the play- playground, and yeah, saying, bro, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. cool and it, 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 it was validating in terms of wanting to come into the space and try to be yourself you know because it yeah. was one of the coolest things about when we first all jumped in there was everyone saying morena and kia ora and all that yeah. i highly doubt there was there were many projects out there that had morena and kia ora all through their chat threads yeah. you know and e- even all of the use of Te Reo Māori in, in the chat, you know, there were there were some some conversations going and things like that, yeah, which is bro. really cool. And that's yeah. something that in our um, Te Mono Nui or crypto, in our blockchain mm. navigator space, yeah. that's something that we're focusing on. And there's a few of us that are really going, okay, so we put here Haka Māori, e tahi uene kupu, e tahi uene hakaro. Like mm. how can we, um, you know, language the stuff in our language, you know, in a way yep. that make, makes sense to us and the way that communicates yep. with us. So it was cool, bro, because, yeah, like you said, yeah. there, would, there wouldn't be any other Discord groups with Te Reo Māori going at that point, eh? Yeah, bro, yeah, definitely not. And, you know, we, we might be wrong. There might might have been some other ones. Yeah. But let, let's say the first that we knew of. Yeah, the first know, that we that knew of. That was like yeah. that. Okay. 
Muggins, absolute legend. Yep, Obiko. I agree, brother Rich. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. So sweet, you we we brought all the fun now in, and um, and then you did your first mint. How did that feel, bro? Sold out. Bro, it was <laughs> outrageous, see. Eh? It was weird, bro. Bro. And let me just give a bit of behind the scenes on the um that lead up. So by this by like the night before, so the mint was I think it was seven thirty AM was for whitelist. <laughs> bro, that that night before, like I had finished all the bits that I could do. So it was really just down to the two bros who were on the the developer side, um, finishing the contract and getting all their bits ready but right down to the last minute like yeah. literally three minutes i think three minutes before seven thirty. <laughs> yeah, three minutes before mint bro the the contract and everything was ready up all night and um when we when the bro said yep it's done and then it all worked we were just like far up and um you know, obviously you have hopes that it will do well. Yeah. You know, otherwise why would you even try? Yeah. Uh and then it had eleven hours. It was less than twelve hours, I remember. And we kept checking the um the counter just to see how many pieces were left on and how many had sold. Yeah. And just kept refreshing the page. It's like, oh look, no, 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 no. three more have gone, yeah. five more have gone. Yeah. And then it, you know, it started slowing down when it got up into the four hundreds. And like, oh, yeah, it's starting to plateau. Or maybe even 300 started to plateau. And then towards the end, it just ramped up. And then all of a sudden, they were all gone. Yeah. And then one of the bro, Cobb, he was away from the... Because we were all on a video call, um, all three of us. And the bro, Cobb, had stepped away from his camera. And when he came back, it was sold. And I said, bro, guess what? What? We just sold out, bro. And then we just... Bro, we just buzzed out. Yeah. Just like, far out. This is yeah. crazy. And then the next, um, yeah, so pretty much that that whole day and the next sort of few hours after I had sold out was just being in the chat and just just saying thank you, really, and just buzzing up. Yeah. And I remember having a young, just, like a yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, and just the feeling was right up there. Eh? Bro, brain was fried. It's <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> just running on Ian for that next day, I just slept woke <laughs> up and just was like far out there was just a from the first auction all the way to that was just handy just it felt and it felt, it felt like never felt like doing a that's what i said actually i said felt like doing a degree a three-year degree in a month <laughs> yes yeah, <laughs> it was end, hectic, you know, man. Learning curve, eh? this. straight into the into the deep end, bro. And a lot of things that I understand now that I think about now, where like there was no way I could have thought about them back then. Yeah, you know, you one of those things being, doing, yeah, bro. One of those things being, um, yeah. like with this project, you know, it's my reputation, but it's also, you know, a lot of people like yourself, a lot of people in this chat right now who have bought in you know a lot of people who have invested you know so it's not just about me anymore you know it's about wanting to do well for all of us you know and now uh, like i'll admit pressure? there's been bro, uh, bro this is exactly what i was gonna say like i'll admit there's been times where it's felt like immense pressure you know especially when like how i was talking earlier about not having done step one before doing step two yeah, yeah. Especially before we started doing that step one stuff. Yeah, we're just figuring out like, oh, yeah, bro. It's like, yeah. why are we actually doing this? And who is it for? And when I wasn't, when I wasn't clear on that, it was, yeah, bro. It was felt heaps of pressure. I was like, wow, this is hard, man. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know how to figure out the next step, you know, or what could it be. But talking with my darling, we've actually gotten a lot clearer on what those next steps are going to look like. And I remember we on one day where I was just feeling the pressure hard out, just felt yeah. super overwhelmed. We actually just sat down and talked to you. Um, just asked me questions. Like, oh, like, why are you feeling like this? What could it be? And then I come down, yeah, come down to that, feeling pressure of not wanting this to fail. Yeah. 
um, not knowing, not being clear on the direction of it and who, who it's for exactly and, yeah. and why and all those things. So we just started. Um, it's a good yeah, interrogation. Talking eh? about, yeah, yeah, bro. Talking about those things and figuring it all out. And then after it, I was like, oh, oh that feels way better, like huge weight. And I, yeah. I felt like before that point, I was just felt always felt like I'm left behind, you know. Like yeah, in, if you're in the ketchup. space, you, you see, you see how fast everything moves in the space, and I felt like I was always trying to catch up, but I didn't even know what I was trying to catch up to and why. Yeah. Like, do I even want to catch up, catch up to that yeah. project that's doing this? Like, is that even stuff that you want to do? You know? Yeah, yeah. So once I figured all that out, I was like, oh, actually, nah. Like, I don't like. They're cool that they're doing that stuff and cool that the other project's doing that stuff. Mm. But none of any of that stuff was stuff that I want to do, you know. I remember you and, and you and I were talking and you were talking about um, like merch, eh? Like kakahu. Mm. So that, that's yeah, bro. So, yeah, that's, that's, that was one of the things we spoke about was not only what we wanted to do, but what we don't want to do. And like just, just on a, like personally, um, like I, I try to anyway be intentional about the impact that I have on things around me. Like, for example, it's like clothes, like kākahu, like just making and printing clothes for like a one-off thing or for some, you know, for a a single use, you know, like that sort of stuff. Like I don't want to just get merch made if I wasn't... Um, like a hundred percent behind that idea of like they they might be just into their t shirt right now, but I don't know, a couple of months from now they might be like, Oh yeah, now I'm over it. I'm just gonna chuck it out. You know, I don't wanna be contributing yeah, to yeah. yeah, to stuff just getting chucked out, you know. And for the like record, I don't once, think anyone would check out a Graph Grooms t shirt. But I get what you're saying. You don't <laughs> yeah, wanna just yeah. produce stuff for producing stuff's sake or just because yeah, everyone bro. else is doing it, but you wanna be yeah. intentional about what you're doing, yeah. what's on your roadmap, eh? Yeah, bro, and this is not a, a knock to anyone who does those things, you know, you, you do whatever, yeah. um, whatever fulfills you, but I just know that that isn't what I what wanted to do, you. you know. Yeah. Yeah, what fulfills me, and one thing that I'm really passionate about is not just making s- fluff stuff is the best way is the, what we yeah. say and fluff stuff is stuff just because like there's no reason for it like it it doesn't need to exist you know like the cool thing about nfts is it's digital you know so yeah. like for example is i don't have to package something up and all of the stuff that's just going to get chucked into the rubbish later yeah. on you know and, and send it to someone so you know in all of these areas where we can be intentional and um have another alternative to it yeah you know we'll try to do that you know what i mean so yeah and then that got me thinking like oh well if we're not doing those things what are we gonna do then you know it can't be just nothing (laughs) you know so yeah we're sort of in that um in that space of getting clearer and figuring out all of those things and um what i love about the fact that we've kind of figured out who we're for is the people who want to be a part of it um, mean. People who don't want to be a part of it mean too. And the ones who are there and want to be there are, are patient. Not that you have to wait a stupid amount of time for something no, to happen, but a patient and yeah, a patient in terms of if it's done properly and done right, then yeah, yeah we'll wait. We'll wait a little bit longer than than someone else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you're making a you're making a, a um, fine dining experience rather than a McDonald's mm. or something like that. Like yeah, um, yeah, bro. yeah. And that, that's what I you know like as someone who has bought in, as someone who has been a kaitautuko from the start. Mm. I'm like, if Honui's doing it, I know it's going to be solid. Like I know he's going to mm. take care. I know he's going to put effort and intention into this, and that's mm. that's what's cool. So, are you kind of redefining what the roadmap is, like where this kaitautuko yeah. is going? Yeah, bro. And um, Sunny, she's been doing heaps of research on different projects in the NFT space. Yeah. And one thing that I think she's found that aligns with us is um, not 
wanting to over promise on things that we don't know we can deliver you know yeah. what i mean and yeah. just saying the things that we know we can do and that we hope to do and then just go to the limit that we can you know with yeah. the with the resources and stuff that we do have now and a roadmap that is isn't finished you know one that will keep growing and make sense with whatever we're doing at that time you know it's not one yeah. where like we're going to plan the next three years right now yeah and then get to the end of this year and go far up actually i've with all this new knowledge and experience that we have now i'd rather the second half of that roadmap be different now you know yeah so yeah yeah we're, we're, we're navigating that space and um yeah it feels like we're getting a bit closer to what what it looks like yeah, and to, to for everybody it. in here including yourself brother who's who's part of the project just yeah want to meet you fellas for your fellas patience and um yeah for for joining us on this this ride well because it's it is a it is a um developing thing we are all learning about mm. this nft space right <laughs> yeah. now i just want to um check it out to all our if, if you guys have any questions check them in the chat now um, and as we as we come towards the end of our quarter, we'll, we'll start answering those questions. So, yeah, questions, check them in the chat. That's on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, they'll all show up. So just out to the whanau. And so, bro, like if you were, say, if I wanted to start up a kaupapa tomorrow, I had a concept, I had an idea, and if I could draw, which I can't. <laughs> but if I had a... You could take photos. Yeah. yeah. Um, like what are things that you would you know really suggest to to people like these are things that if i was you i'd have a think about this or like here's here's some mm. real big lessons that we've learned um about the mm. space yeah um just a caveat i don't know so take this with a grain of salt <laughs> yeah but um, i mean but you who have yeah, gone yeah, through yeah. this um, process and gone you know what do we do yeah i think figure out how you want to approach it like do you want to just be like um, known for just the artwork or just the things you create as individual pieces? Um, do you want to create a project, like a project that creates a series of, of pieces, whether that be 5,000, 10,000, whatever, that are all interlinked and that might have some uh, utility built into it? And utility, for anybody new, is pretty much extra benefits to owning owning an NFT. So you own an NFT and it also is a ticket to a concert, for example. That's that's one example. Um, so yeah, figure out what sort of direction you want to go first. And then um, if you wanted to go the individual artist route, you, you can do it all by yourself. You just pick a blockchain. The most popular is Ethereum. The one that we're on is Phantom Blockchain. And then you go onto a marketplace on there. So the one on Ethereum is OpenSea, the biggest one. Yeah. And then you just um, you create your artwork, whatever it is, put it in there, um, and then you can sell it on there. You know, people can buy it from you on there, like mint it. Yeah. So that's that's one route. And the cool thing about that is, it only goes through you. You know, you don't have to have a team behind you to make it happen. Obviously, you're gonna need help. So you're asking around people who know is helps make that thing run smoother uh and then the other way you know with a project um that's another one that you unless you're incredibly talented and and know how to code being a developer and an artist you know <clears throat> and you've you don't sleep <laughs> you're probably <laughs> going to need a team you know and like at the bare minimum you need a, a developer if you're an artist and the developer is the person who's going to write the code make a contract for you um or even help you with with the the crypto blockchain side of stuff because a lot of times you know as, as artists um you like just focusing on the art yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and not any of the the technical um learning stuff you'd rather just be in your creative flow um yeah so getting a team like that in order to make it happen and if you you have a bigger team you know, you can start focusing on getting a person who's just for marketing, getting somebody who's a Discord person who knows how to create communities and engage communities, um, you know, and so on and so forth. 
obviously the bigger and the more talented your team is, the um, the the more focused you can be on your single job. Yeah. But if you've got a smaller team, you know, you, yeah. your jobs have to overlap in certain areas, which makes it a bit harder and slower. But yeah, um, yeah we're still figuring it out. So those would be some of the biggest lessons that you've learned in, mm. after going through this process, eh? Yeah, yeah, bro. And what, like, if, if we if we zoom out of Graph Grams now and think about, you know, you, you've created, you're a prolific artist, but you've created so many different, um, you know, works and series and stuff like the, the Atua um, prints and stuff. Where do you see that going, you know, for, your, for the rest of your art? So you're creating these Graph Grams, um, and that's one that's one oh that's one thread mm. um but like how do you see it working for all your other art as well oh yeah so um i remember at the start of this whole nft journey i started a piece which was a like a matariki piece and the idea for it was like to create a whole piece of artwork on stream mm. and then so it kind of felt like a community piece. So like yeah. people who tuned in, they can go far out. You know, we were there during every single stroke of that pencil, you know, mm-hmm. for that artwork and then it make it feel like a community piece. And um, yeah, so as an, like as an artist separate from Graf Grimm's, um, bro, it's, it's hard to, to not see myself creating in this space, you know, moving forward. Yeah. And, the the bigger thing the biggest thing being um the capabilities you know getting a percentage from every single time it sells sells on and knowing that the people who buy it are the the owners of that you know that that addition that they have Hmm. and you know when you you buy something and you pay your own money for it you want to know that you've got that piece you know like yeah and you want to know that and you want other people to know like i've got the real one like yeah, that the bro yeah, just someone else printed, off, right printed off a it. version. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But I've got the proof that I've got the real one. And the the thing about these certificates of authenticity is it matters to the people that care about it. You know, yeah. Anybody who will print it, right click and save it and print it for them. You know, they 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 don't value it the same as the people who care about it. You know. Yeah. And um, yeah, bro, it's. I've got ideas of like stuff that I want to create in the NFT space separate from Graf Um But it's, I think once I've figured out my sort of clear direction with Graf Grimms and have no more doubts or at least minimal doubts about how to go about doing it, then I can start, that'll relieve some yeah. pressure. Some headspace. <laughs> then I can start, yeah, bro, start creating separate stuff. Um, yeah. from it just just <laughs> want to say I want you to reserve some of those Atua pictures for me please bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are you, are you bro, thinking you'll, a... you'll drop that series bro um I don't, know, bro. I don't know definitely probably iterations you know like yeah. updated and one, one of the things this is just me thinking out loud or mm. really just sharing ideas that have crossed my mind before but I remember before we had even dropped the first episode, I was talking to the bros and it was when I had like an epiphany of all of these different possibilities in the NFT space. I was like, man, you could create like a, like a, let's say, Rafi Tsuroa, you know, you create an Rafi Tsuroa NFT token yeah. and that token means that, and you pay like a premium on it but it means yeah. that for the rest of your life, whatever event that you go to and whatever event Rafi Tiroa goes to and I'm there with the token, it means I get professional photos from him with the the thing that he's shooting. You know, for example, if it's yeah, at yeah. Matatini, I yeah. can do it with the the maho or whatever, yeah. you know, or something like that. So I've always got yeah, a Rafi Tiroa cool professional idea. photograph of me for the rest of my life. You know, so there yeah, was an example of I something him. I was thinking about, yeah. Right, I'll Whatever thing Rafi Tirua jumps into, yeah. me and all of these people that bought these Rafi Tirua tokens at the beginning, and get a shot. We've got first dibs at at this yeah. this next thing that he's doing, you know. Yeah. So things like that cross my mind, or even like online, um, 
like an online course where you have an NFT for it, or you like NFT token. So someone yeah. pays and then you connect your wallet to it and then it gives you access to your procreate the course, tutorials. you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you could have like a a gold version or whatever, which is oh yeah, you get to go hang out in real life and actually have some one on one time or whatever, you know. So yeah, those like are things that are coach, just you could coach someone how yeah, to, bro, how to yeah. one on one for a day or something if you got yeah, yeah, yeah. token. Yeah. Cause that you know, because you know what it's like when you have one on one time with people, oh, yeah. you can compress months and years down into one day. Yeah, you yeah. know. So yeah, bro, those are things that are floating around, which will at some point happen. <clears throat> we'll keep keep our eyes out for that one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got any last um, or you know, kororo that you want to share with the whanau, bro? Um, what would I like to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just say a few um, kopapa that we support, and um, things that we yeah things that we are for and things that we ain't for. Um, one of them is um, huha, which is humans. What is it? Oh, help us help animals, which is what huha stands for. So yeah, being vegan, um, you know, I love animals and it's, um, we, yeah, supporting them. Um, one of the, the bro, uh, Cobb wants to support, um, this co that gives laptops to kids. Hmm. Um, I think it was laptops to Maori kids. So, you know, allowing them to do their mahi. Uh, also we just signed up to this, um, uh, what was it called? Carbon Zero. Oh yeah, cool gram. Cool gram, yeah, yeah. Cool gram. We just subscribe yeah. to that, so they offset your carbon footprint from your use of Instagram. Um, so things like that, like how we were talking before about intention. And this is not trying to be like, no, it's not like virtuous. virtuous it's, it's, yeah, no. Yeah. No, these are things that you guys do specifically yeah. because you're intentional about how you move in the space. Yeah, and yeah, these are and these are things that we would do regardless. So like. My partner and I, we're both vegan because we love animals and we've been, have been so for six years. Yeah. Before I had heard that NFTs put together, you know, so that's just, yeah, just a little bit of me. So you know that I'm not all shit <laughs> pretty <laughs> much. But, um, yeah, so really just trying to be, um, intentional. And also, do you follow us out there? I have it together about 10% of the time, 90% of the time. Over, you struggle with overwhelm, struggle with wondering if it's going to work out, you know, struggle with trying to create. Like there's sometimes whole days where I just cannot for the life of me create, mm. you know, or create anything that is um, good, you know. So don't think that the little bits of me that you see online are, are me because it ain't, you know, it's just part well, of it. It is you, but it's Just know that I struggle. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. the whole thing, you know. I, I struggle heaps with the stuff that I do and there's heaps of times where I think far out what am I up to you know I have heaps of heaps of doubt and then you break through that wall and you go far yeah I feel mean as and then you hit another brick wall you know and just know that it's a it's not the forever journey man yeah and then we're talking about like we were saying we've got a got a good question from the boat um Mephody Mafiti. Mafiti, oh, you should chill, Um, yeah. Why? Why did you choose Phantom? So for everyone else, um, there's different networks. So Bitcoin is a blockchain. Ethereum is a blockchain, which has other um, layers built on it. Um, and Phantom is another blockchain. Um, and that's that's where Graphgrams live. Um, and that's the mm. currency that we use to to purchase Graphgrams. So yeah, bro, why why did you do? Why did you choose Phantom instead of Ethereum? Yes. Oh, no. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's oh, that's one of them is is gas fees. So gas fees for anybody who doesn't know is like um, it, it's a transaction fee on yeah. the on the blockchain really, and it's a it's a fee that you pay to somebody in the internet. <laughs> and um, that so doesn't go but, to bro, the artist. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't get to the artist. It goes to what are called miners. 
crypto miners. But bro, there there wasn't there was no um like intelligent reason why I chose Phantom over any other blockchain. Like it just happened to be the blockchain that I was introduced to, you know, with the bro the bro Levi, he was on the Phantom blockchain and he said, Come jump at this auction and it happened to be in their blockchain, met a few people, heard about some of the, the benefits of it but to be honest it was the first blockchain that i was introduced to mm. you know for example um you know like if, if you're somebody who was introduced to trade me first you kind of get used to that and you just go oh you know there might be better Rather options than but ebay or i'm, I'm amazon just or something. Yeah, yeah yeah ebay or amazon i'm just used to selling on amazon or oh, on trade me so for me yeah there, there's no clever as um, reason why why I'm on Phantom, but the people that I've met met here, are, you know, yeah, choices. Cool yeah, bro. And well, the way that I think about it is, um, I, I might be wrong. Is it shouldn't matter, you know, where your project is. If if the project is a good project, you know, obviously you don't want to be on a blockchain that's just going to disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want, um, you want but to be yeah, bro. Yeah, if if the project is worth people's time and energy to um to be a part of, then they'll go there. You know. Yeah. So and then, you then brought it comes a whole lot of people us. over there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that's that's it, my bro. <laughs> and um, um, what are our fakaro on metaverse? I'll let you go first, bro. Bro, I think that's mean. Yeah. We just literally had our first jam in the metaverse the other day. Um, Sunny and I on yeah. um, what's it called? It was a um, decentral land or something. Oh, like decentral land, yeah, yeah, yeah. Decentral land, yeah. We just had to play around in there, yeah. bro. And we were just running around in there, and I was just like, far out, like. It was all making sense, all the stuff that I heard before, you know. Yeah. When I first started hearing Metaverse, I heard Ready Player One and yeah. I've seen Ready Player One and I like it. And I was just like, yeah, 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 that sounds mean. But actually being in in there, I was like, far out, this is actually it. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we were running around to all these um these different places in the central land and it was like, there was one place, it was like Nintendo land. Yeah. And you just went in this, walked around in this mansion and there were these paintings old of old yeah. nintendo memorabilia and i was just like far out you could the possibilities are endless and then this is only like um what's it voxel graphics yeah, yeah. so and then Box i started eight. thinking back about yeah but blocks i started thinking back to like sega yeah which was yeah, like eight bit pixels and stuff and then you think about now with like pc and ps5 and xbox series x and stuff mm. and you think far out we're in the sega stage now in the yeah. metaverse and i think we're a... actually doing it on purpose as a homage as a as a like a, yeah yeah it's a, a style like, the you know. original days because when mm. i first saw the the pixel nfts i was like the hell people Crypto buying these for like you know makes no sense yeah. Yeah, yeah but then we no think, obvious oh, sense it's retro it's it's you know it's nostalgic yeah, making, yeah it is this nostalgic it's a nod to the og stuff but but yeah, yeah bro, bro. bro, like you, I'm I'm thinking like soon all of that stuff's gonna sm- smooth out, and we're gonna have you know PS5 graphics in there in the metaverse. Bro. And then, you know when we're in there, like we've we've got a good 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 question leading into this metaverse one. How do you see your NFTs? Like, how do you see the graphics being used in the metaverse? Do you reckon like in time we might be able to 3D them and then use them as our avatars yeah, up in the metaverse? Hundred percent. 100% yep. that's that's what I dream of is having um all the attributes and things that we create be um like you own like if you own that NFT then you own all of those attributes you know and obviously find people who can make that happen you know yep. you can 3 d um yep. those items and then you can go walk around as with that avatar and I don't know go back to Nintendo land for example and then you meet someone else who's a uh, a world of women or something and then you just go and then you can be instantly recognizable and because you know it's, it's just like um clothes now you it's know a people, belonging thing eh? yeah really people wear certain brands yeah. 
because yeah. it means something and you're proud to wear it so you, you know if, if this project is something that people like they'll walk around looking like box or whatever and they'll be like oh you're the the kratos one so then yeah, you, yeah. you know it, it's a another way to express your it's personality like, oh you, you know, got those and, jordans from 95 and you know in this color Whoa. yeah same bro thing, eh? same thing. yeah so we're already there, doing it yeah we're already doing it and you know and, and then and social on media and stuff yeah, Fortnite, yeah. on um we have there? digital yeah, like, profiles yeah yeah call of duty it's we're just a extension of all that yeah, yeah bro i don't and I think, like, for me, and, and these are some of the conversations I've had, um, some of the one I've had as well was, like, you know, um, and, and um, me and Anonymous talked about it, we need to set a cultural base um, within the metaverse because our kids are going to go into it anyway, regardless. Mm. Like, this is where gaming is going to go. This is where TV and social media is going to go. So I reckon it's important for us to really set a good foundation in there so that when our Tamariki do go in there, or Rangatai do go in there. They've got a good foundation to hold on to. Like, this is mm. how we roll in here. We need to teach our whanau about safety. <clears throat> how yeah, to for sure. Be safe in the metaverse. You know, you might meet someone, you might meet a like a, a, another Kratos box, or you might meet an ape or something and then become mm. friends. And then they might be asking you, you know, your kid about, oh, where do you live? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, what's what's your address and things like that you mm. know like we need to teach that um that safety that awareness um mm. scammers you know like i got my instagram hacked the other day that you know yeah that meant that my instagram i trusted you know like all you fellas who follow my my socials if you if i've been talking about crypto and then you get a message about crypto then you go oh yeah that must be legit you know those sorts of yeah. things so, these are all yeah, things bro. for us to really, you know, be careful of and aware of mm. that go in with our eyes yeah. open. And I reckon the other thing is is we need to make sure we keep our honunga to our taiao, to our real world, to our kanui, yeah, bro, kanui, yeah. our tangata nei. Because there's, yeah. you know, like here, you and me are having this conversation, you know, over, you know, over the internet, and that's cool. Mm. But again, like you said, face to face, you know, there's nothing that um, kind of replaces that. You know, you, mm. you can't beat that. So I think, like, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about mm. the, the possibility. I've already seen some um, galleries, so some NFT collectors, you can go yeah, into bro. the gallery and you can, like, move your phone around and you're inside their gallery and you can look at the different pieces of art, you know, that mm. they've got in their room. Or, like, another one is, um, you know, in time we'll have augmented reality glasses, kind of like how um, people... Bro, that's going to be the norms. Pokemon Go, you know, so yep. your camera is looking at the real world, but in the real world is something digital. So it could be yep. that this wall behind me is empty, but when I look at it with my um, AR glasses, then I can see the NFT of um, mm. Box of Shari that, you know, that I yep. bought that's there in my house. Um, so, yeah, the potential is epic. Um, but I Bro, think like with any unlimited. technology, yeah, we just need to be intentional about where we go with that, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, just be, like, be smart, you know, about things. Like, for example, with pages that are always getting hacked and there's always these, like, win money competitions and things that come up yeah. that are obviously scams and all that, you know, like, let's all, yeah, like, learn to be clever about the spaces that you're in and um not just believe everything that you see and that you hear you know what i mean because that, that's another thing of being safe too is um learning to discern what's what and if you're unsure then just think of it as too good to be true you know don't mm. don't be unsure about something that you get in and just go oh i hope that it's a good thing let me just go do it anyway yeah if you're unsure just say nah for, it, it might be a bad thing you know so i'm not gonna proceed unless i get some advice from someone else yeah. you know so yeah just educating your, yourself too <clears throat> yeah and what do you what else do you reckon about safety like what are some things that you've learned you know through going through this process and I don't mean just safety as in safety as being hacked, but like when you're investing mm. into a project, 
you know, what are you looking for? Oh, bro. So I haven't even invested into any projects. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've really taken to... creating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. And to be honest, bro, it's um, like I, as much as I've learned in this space, it's, it still feels like less than 0.5%, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, um, I don't, I don't have any money to, to lose, bro. So, and that's, that's one of the things that I've learned is if you don't have any money, like if you're not willing to lose that money, you know, that investment, then don't invest it. Yeah. And I, I don't have any, so, yeah. so I'm not going to invest money. I don't have to possibly lose it. Yeah. You know, you can have all the best intentions and hopes for a project to go um, well, but you never know, you know, you never know. And then you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Like I've, been, I've invested into crypto, yeah, but I haven't invested into any um, NFT projects yet. Yeah. And some of our other one, and I will start getting into crypto and talking about that, but um, yeah, yeah no, man, really, really appreciate um, you being really open. Um, and, and sharing with us the, the struggles and the wins and mm, you know, the highs and lows plenty, man. of this kaupapa. Massive akuranga. And um, yeah, it's a real honor to be able to, um, one, be part of that, that community um, with, with the Grims, bro. I, I'm, I am proud to say that I was an OG member and I was there at the first bro. show. <laughs> I wish I was proud able to, to buy you, one the first one. I wasn't a high roller <laughs> enough. <laughs> but... Um, but yeah, no, thanks for sharing that with us and, you know, giving people an insight into the creator side, you know, because I think a lot mm. of us, the majority of us will be on the, okay, we're buying, we're learning how to get a meta mask and mint something, you know, buy it. But yeah. also as a creator, you know, the things that you think about, I, I think that's a real valuable thing to think about, you know, mm. one, why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? Um, mm. You know, where do you want to go with it? Um, you know, because... Yeah. Yeah, we can buy it because we like the art. Like, you know, we yep. love the art and that's something that we'll buy. Or we can be buying it because we think it's going to go to the moon. You know, we think that actually mm. this is a really good investment. For me, like, as well as I just want to support you, um, I know you're, you're going to be a Picasso by the time, you know, like down the track. So I know that mm -hmm. anything I buy of yours now is an investment. You know, mm. and, and I have personal belief um, and, and, and trust in that. So, you know, there's all sorts of different reasons why we would support a kaupapa, why we would um, buy into a kaupapa, invest in a kaupapa. Um, yeah. And I just want to really mihi to you, bro, for sharing, you know, your side of it, you know, the back end of it, the behind the yeah. scenes. Oh, bro. Um, nga mihi ki akwe, my bro, and yeah. Super grateful to be on here talking to you, brother, and having this platform to um, shed a bit of light on different aspects of the NFT space. Uh, and like you said, you know, I just want to reiterate where we're all learning, you know. Um, and it's it's cool and exciting to see Māori in this space and being excited about um, having a tutu and having that to to nature that we have be rewarded and you know be in a space where it's a good thing to be like that yeah. um yeah no thank you fellas for all tuning in and having a listen and sending your fellas questions through hopefully fellas got some sort of value out of our quarter um one thing that i hope you take away is um yeah just go out and have a jam and it's going to be hard <laughs> if you're willing to create it. It's going to be hard, but that's even more reason to, to make sure that you enjoy it. Oh, you know, make sure it's something that you, you care about. Because yeah. you, you only struggle through those hard times for something you care about, but something you don't, you'll just give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then also, if you're, if you're the creator and you've created something and then you just give up on it, then it kind of leaves all your community in the, in the lurch, eh? Yeah, bro. Exactly, exactly. And we're in it for the long run, far nip. Yeah. Graf Grams, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um Etefano just dropped the, the links to our Discord. So there's the um the Graf Grams Discord is the link number one. Link number two is the blockchain navigators, um Temonanui or Crypto. 
um, Discord, no my oh, there might um, yeah, in those spaces, both of these communities are really supportive. Both of them are about, you know, really upskilling us and, and, and supporting us to learn in, in the space. So um, no my how my bring all your questions. Um, there's people mm. in there that do have uh, more experience in the space. Remember, you know, like those those fakatoki now in the crypto space, only invest what you can afford to lose. Do your own research. Even if I say, man, this project is awesome, don't just buy in because I said it's awesome. You have to go and check it out. Check out who's behind it, mm. who are the creators, where's it going, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and this is not financial advice. This is this is a wānanga. Um, this is a learning space um, for all of us to learn, learn and grow together. Um, because you know, early adopters, that's that's where, you know, the early bird gets the worm. If I bought Bitcoin when it first um, popped, <laughs> I'd be sitting happy that's now. That's what we've all been seeing, eh? Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, in reality, I, I bought a Te Haunui Tuna Graph Gram when it first dropped. And, you know, I, I have belief, I have faith that in time, mm. you know, ka, ka tino whaihua, so... Just run a really um, mihi to you, bro, and mihi to all of our um, kaupakarongo. Uh, po mari kia koutou. Kia you on the next one. Cheer, brother.